Welcome to the Bread of Light broadcast. We pray that today's teaching blesses you, encourages you, inspires you, and motivates you to truly live a life worthy of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords that we serve. Be blessed by today's teaching. God bless. For joining us tonight as we go through our Bible study, um, we are in a series of talking about words that work, and we've addressed a couple words already. Um, the first word, I believe, was commitment. The pastor um, talked about the first week, and then I talked about intentional, being intentional with our walk with God. Um, the second week, and then yes, last week, pastor talked about being diligent. And in last week's lesson, um, one of we, we the question was asked about a definition of being diligent, and one of the words that came out was uh, persistent, being persistent. And so, in that thought, in that frame of mind, thinking about what persistency is, and we can think about this word being a necessity when in our walk with God, because to be persistent in our walk requires something. Um, most people that are, there's a difference between people that achieve their goals and people that don't. And that difference is the, the level of persistence. And so when we're walking with God, faced with things that we deal with on a daily basis and just in our walk, that we have to be persistent. And so I wanted to first talk about being persistent and um, what you think persistent looks like. So what does persevere, I'm sorry, I thought that wrong, persevere meant to, means to you and what does it look like to you? So a person that perseveres, a person that's persistent, what does that look like to you? Anybody can answer that. Um, well, persevere to me means that you keep going in whatever it is, kind of no matter what obstacles come up or distractions and whatnot. Um, and it looks to me like somebody is very determined, very focused, mm -hmm. um, and then generally successful. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else want to share? I, I would say the perseverance to have the resolve uh, to complete what it is that one has their mind set on. Mm -hmm. um, regardless of the challenges that come, um, regardless of the setbacks that might happen, uh, the setbacks aren't viewed as an end, they're just viewed as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's good, that's good. The definition that I have is persevere means to continue in a course of action, even in the face of difficulty or with little or no prospect of success. That means we continue no matter what the outcome may look like. And I think it's important because as Christians um, that we have persistence because when you're not persistent, you can be looked at as weak that, um, and then the, you're, you're, you're trusting mostly in yourself and not in God. So the persistence comes in believing that God's going to do the thing that you asked him to do and trusting God is, is faithful to perform it. And so there's many examples in the Bible about being persistent. And I want to go over a couple of those before we get into some, some more discussion. So, so there's four of them that I was able to identify and the first one came from the persistent woman that kept asking until she got justice. And I'm going to read Luke. I'm, going to go, I'm not going to read the whole thing of Luke 18 and 1, but I'm just going to read uh, a little bit of it, just a little background. So this was a parable that Jesus was talking to the, um, them about teaching the disciples about persistence so that they 
can um, understand what it means and what it what it takes to be persistent. So in Luke 1, it says a widow of that city came to him repeatedly saying, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. Now I'm reading this out of the New Living Translation. But this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she was wearing me out with her constant, constant request. So the secret to this woman, it's interesting to know that even though the judge didn't believe everything that about uh, God, but her consistency, her, her persistence is the one that thing that made him change his mind and grant her request. The other thing that's interesting is that there was a word that was used, the key takeaway that we can help with persistence is justice. She used justice. The word justice indicates that she was, she had the right to do what she was asking for. It wasn't a favor, but rather it was based off the knowledge of what she knew was rightfully hers. And when we think about that, when we're asking God for things and we, we want things to happen, we think about the thing that I want is rightfully mine. We're not asking things that are out the will of God, but the things that God has promised us and the benefits of serving God. And we ask God for those things. <clears throat> then it's then it's God's re the request that we give to God. God will do those things. So whatever the goal is, if you convince yourself that you deserve it, that almost ignites a drive for you to be persistent. Um, so that's one example. The other example we kind of know about, we pretty much heard about the woman with the issue of blood that went through the crowd and it's very familiar. So you consider this woman that had this issue of blood that was persistent because she was bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, but she still wasn't getting any better. She actually got worse. So continually to try to get better for 12 years is without a doubt by itself persistent. Because after some time, some people will probably have given up by this time. We're not even trying to find a Try, not even try to find relief or even get healed, but she continued. And then she not only persisted in trying to find the right doctor, despite getting worse, she also reached out to touch Jesus, pushing through the crowd. Like she said, if I can only touch the cloak, I, I will be healed. And that's a great example of us doing all you can to get what you desire. You know, just like her, she heard that Jesus was, was in town and about the doctors that weren't able to help her, she had given, she could have given up at the first set of doctors, but she didn't. She knew Jesus was coming. She knew that Jesus was able to heal her. She pressed through the crowd, even though all the people were around her. She could have easily said, well, there's too many people around. I'm not going to, I'm not going to interfere, but she didn't care because the thing that she wanted, she knew Jesus could do and she persisted and she consistently um, drove to try to get that issue resolved. And then the result was that God did eventually, Jesus did eventually heal her. Um, the other example I have of persistence is Bartimaeus. Um, Bartimaeus, we know, was the blind man. And he, um, he didn't let the crowd keep him from getting him to Jesus' attention for his healing. So when Jesus was passing by, he saw it and then he said to them, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the people around him rebuked him, um, told him to be quiet, but he shouted even louder saying, son of David, have mercy on me. The fact that he was shouting out all the more when people was trying to make him be silent is a great example of his persistence. It's even a little step higher because he did what, was what he was doing even more than bored before facing his issue. And as a result of his persistence, he got Jesus' attention and he was, and he was healed. Um, so, you know, it, 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 makes, it, it makes us be mindful of not letting people around us, because that's very common, criticisms, critics, people that can 
that will tell you that it doesn't take all that, people that will tell you that you should wait or it's not going to happen, that we be persistent in the thing that we know that God can do and we continue to ask God for the thing that we need so that we can get you know, get our, our, get what we need from God. Now, the last one um, example I have about persistence, I want to talk about the Canaanite woman and her persistence who led to success. So um, in asking Jesus for her demon-possessed daughter healing, she refused to take no for an answer. And at the end, her persistence got her to what she wanted. So the story of the Canaanite woman is that uh, she, while Jesus was in the region of Sidon and Tyre, this woman came crying out to the Lord, crying out saying, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed and suffering terribly. And in response, Jesus implied that the answer was going to be no, because she was a Canaanite woman. But despite that, the Canaanite woman persisted with further pleading. After Jesus made another statement that suggested that he wouldn't go heal her, the Canaanite woman didn't give up. She then said, um, you know, Jesus told her, is it not right to take from the children's bread and toss it to the dogs? And then the response was, even the dogs in the, eat from the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And that last statement she made was the key that unlocked the door. And because of her faith, Jesus granted her request. So those are a couple of the things, couple examples of persistence um, in the Bible that we can refer to when it comes to being persistent. So now I wanna just, this is a little bit more reading and I'm gonna ask people if they can see it to help out with reading. So in our walk, there's multiple things that the enemy would try to come and make us not be persistent in. And one is our faith in Christ, prayer, um, our Christian lifestyle and other people and suffering and trials and tribulations. And I want, I have some scriptures that I wanna talk about that hones in on why we need to be persistent in all of these areas. So I don't know if someone can see this, if they can read, this is Hebrew 13, 3, 13 through 19. Yeah, I can no, I'll read. Try to read. Oh, go ahead, okay. go ahead. Go ahead, Sister Davina, no problem. Hebrews 3, 13 to 19 NLT. You must warn each other every day while it is still today so that none of you will be deceived by sin and hardened against God. For if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believe, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. Remember what it says. Today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled. And who was it and who was it who rebelled against God, even though they heard his voice? Wasn't it the people Moses led out of Egypt? And who made God angry for 40 years? Wasn't it the people who sinned, whose corpse lay in the wilderness? And to whom was God speaking when he took an oath that they would never enter his rest? Wasn't it the people who disobeyed him? So we see that because of their unbelief, they were not able to enter his rest. Thank you, thank you for that. So I wanna point out a couple of things in this scripture. So the first thing it says, you must warn each and every day while it is still today. I mean, that is so, um, the fact that it's so important that it's a daily thing that we have to do. It's a daily thing that we have to be able to be persistent and be mindful of the sin and the heartening against God, because this, this then reflects our faith in Christ. So when I think about this scripture, I think about how, when it talks about the people that these Israelites that saw the works of God, but still turned their, turned their backs on God and didn't, was disobedient. And you even have that now because we have, we can say that we've walked with God a long time and we'll never turn our backs on them. But these people in, in this has actually witnessed things of God, witnessed the miracles of God, and they still are disobedient. So how much more do we need to be even more careful and be more 
in tuned and, and sensitive to the spirit of God about things that are happening that could deceive us and cause us to question or even have issues with our faith in Christ. So our persistent and being faithful and, and trusting God, because if we're not persistent in those things and our faith in Christ is, is low or a void, the Bible clearly says that then we won't share the thing that belongs to God. So we, we have to be mindful of that when it comes to our faith in Christ. So we have to persevere in our faith in Christ. The next one I have is in prayer. Somebody can read that or see that. If not, I can read that. I can read that. Uh, Luke eleven five through 9. Then teaching them more about prayer, he used this story. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out from his bedroom. Don't bother me. The door is locked for the night and my family and I are all in bed. I can't help you. But I tell you this, though he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. And so I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you asked for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. Hmm. This reminded me again of the, the, the example, the parable that Jesus talked about, the persistent woman, to the point where it said it. it he didn't, but I'll tell you this, though he don't do it, he didn't do it for friendship. I came to Tavina's house. I'm telling Tavina, I got this friend over here that needs something. And Tavina yells out, say, hey, I don't got nothing to close the door, but I'm persistent. I need it, I need it, I need it. And then she said, okay, I don't, it ain't got nothing to do with us being friends. It ain't got nothing to do with us knowing each other. I'm just going to do it because you just won't leave me alone. And that by itself, <coughs> allows us to get the things that we want. So it shows how our persistence and our prayer, our prayer life gets us what we need because it, then it talks about if you keep asking, you shall receive what you ask for. And sometimes we have to be careful because we don't automatically get the results right away. And that causes us to not to give up, but it clearly says that we have to keep on asking and you receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. Amen. Anyone has anything to say about that before I, or any of those before I go on to the next two? Uh, I, I do, if I may. Um, okay. Um, particularly here with prayer, and, and, I, and I really like the way that this version wrote it. Um, because as you're talking, I'm thinking about characteristics of persistent people. And um, one of the characteristics of a persistent person is that they have a burning desire for what it is that they're persistent about. And um, it, they basically want what it is that they want really, really bad. And they never look for an excuse or a way out. You know, somebody once said, you know, if you really want to do something, you'll find a way. If you don't, you'll find an excuse. And individuals that are persistent you know, work through the dead ends, they work through the failures, they work through when it seems like nothing is happening and no progress is being made because they have a goal in mind. They have um, something in mind that they've envisioned, which is really, you know, another characteristic that the vision that one has is persistent, is just all consuming. It don't matter how much sense it does it make. You know, this is my vision for what's going to happen. You know, and when you were talking about um, the examples on the previous slide, that's the one thing that I saw in all of them. They all had vision and it it, it, it really screamed out to me um, when you were talking about Bartimaeus, you know, and how Bartimaeus, even though he did not have sight, he still had vision. Mm. And in looking at the relationship between sight and vision, with Bartimaeus, that basically, and the activity that he engaged in, 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 in my opinion, is really an object lesson in what faith is. Because faith is the subject of things, the sub, substance of things, hope for the evidence of things, what? Not seen. Though Bartimaeus couldn't see it with his natural eyes because he was blind, 
he had a clear vision of what he fully expected to happen once Jesus came, you know, and had mercy on him. And as we, in my opinion, um, strive to really exercise our faith to that measure, or whether we see it, but even more so if we don't, we just make up our minds that we want it bad enough to do whatever it takes, whether we see progress or not, that's when our persistence, in my opinion, pays off. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. Um, the other thing we have to be consistent is our Christian lifestyle and other people. And I'm going to read this one because I thought this was very interesting. And this is from Jude 1, 17, to 17 through 23 in an NLT version. But you, my dear friends, must remember what the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ predicted. They told you that in the last times there would be scoffers whose purpose in life is to satisfy their own un their ungodly desires. These people are the ones who are creating divisions among you. They follow their natural instincts because they do not have God's spirit. Church on the Move, dedicated to sharing the good news of Jesus Christ through the preached and taught word, community activism and outreach, and practical ministry designed to meet needs, bless hearts, save souls, and change lives. You can sow into the ministry via our cash app at dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. That's dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. Sow your seed into the good works and good ground of Living Witness Ministries today. And thank you for helping us reach the world with the life-giving word. We pray that you were blessed by today's broadcast and would love to hear from you. If you have any prayer requests, praise reports, or would like to learn more about Living Witness Ministries, you can contact us by email at livingtowitness at gmail.com. That's the word living, the number two, witness at gmail.com or by phone at area code 404-955-8846. Again, that's area code 404-955-8846. Until next time, we encourage you to continue to live your life as a living witness. 
have God's spirit. But you, dear friends, must build each other up in your most holy faith. Pray in the power of the Holy Spirit and await the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ, who will bring you eternal life. In this way, you will keep yourself safe of God's love. And you must show mercy to those who faith is wavering. Rescue others by snatching them from the flames of the judgment. Show mercy to still others, but do so with great caution, hating the sins that contaminate their lives. So there's two things I wanted to point out. The first thing, when it talks about that in the last days, there would be scoffers whose purpose in life is to satisfy their own ungodly desires. And I think about that when it comes to our own Christian lifestyle about the company that we keep, um, making sure that the people that we are around are have the same purpose in their Christ. Like the people, now I know there's, there's people that we have to, we have to witness to that may not have the, the, the belief of Christ, but when we are hanging with people, when we are um, cons um, looking for counsel with people, um, those people, we have to be mindful and careful that they, we are thinking the same because they, so, there are so many people that have these ungodly desires and those spirits transfer. And if we're not careful, if we're not careful, that it can cause issues and cause division. So we have to be mindful of that. But the other thing that was interesting to me too was when it comes to being persistent with other people. And I think it's easier said than done because people can be people. And it is sometimes hard for us to be able to continue to try to pour into people that is totally ignoring or neglecting or refusing to believe in Christ. But in the scripture, it shows that we have to be persistent in that, even in persistent in witnessing, even in persistent when they don't want to hear it or they think they know it all, that we have to be persistent in telling them about Christ so that it says like snatching them out the flames of judgment. And, and have to show mercy and grace to those people, but being cautious, still being cautious of the sins that they have, but still being mindful that we may have an assignment to that person, be they may be the only person that could share the gospel with them. So this was this was interesting to me to see that, that we have to be persistent when it talks about people, especially when dealing with people, because people can be very difficult. Any, any response on that or any feedback on that? Well, that, that really, to me, just speaks to the heart of ministry. I mean, this really speaks to the heart of ministry and it really speaks to the heart of Christ's ministry, you know, leadership, transformational leadership by example. And, we have to remember that it's an investment and investments are not a quick pay situation. You know, mm -hmm. investments take time and to really get the dividend from an investment, you got to ride out the highs, and you got to ride out the lows. And it takes a special person to be able to do that and not just want to grab what's valuable to them and go put it someplace that's safe. It's not designed to be safe as it were. But it's the safest place to put our time and our energy and our faith because we know at the end, the payoff is the eternal reward of, of, of everlasting life. And it starts with our lifestyle. You know, an, another characteristic of, you know, individuals that are, are persistent is that they have, um, they ultimately all have made their minds up that they, they, they have role models that act as guides and mentors to them. And for us, we all know Christ is our role model. And in the midst of us having Christ as our role model, for those that don't know Christ, unbeknownst to us, we might be their role model. And it's not designed to be a pride thing. It's just designed to be an accurate and clear reflection and example of who Christ is. And we got to be persistent in doing that. We got to want that so bad that 
no matter who comes to try to push our buttons, you know, to push our nuclear codes to get us to blow up in our flesh, we got to keep those on lock as best we can. And what we can't do, allow God to do the rest because we never know who's watching us. And we never know, particularly in those times where we're being tested the most when they need to see our persistence at work, because that might be the difference between saying, them saying yes to Jesus and saying no to him. Thank you. That's good. That's good. Anybody else? Okay, if not, this is a question I want to ask. How? I and mean, we, we know we have to. We know that there's examples. We know the areas in which we have to be per, um, persevere in. But how do we be persistent? What makes us be persistent? That's for anyone. Um, it could be a personal testimony for yourself. What do you do? What makes you be persistent? Okay, so I was doing a um, a thing on Facebook and I was talking about how in the Bible, um, Jesus is said in uh, it's Matthew 26 and 44. It said that he left and went away once more and prayed a third time saying the same thing. So even Jesus prayed the same thing and was persistent and persevered, you know, in his prayer time with God, the father, Jesus did. And so I had put that up there and somebody had come in and said, it's feel like I'm begging. And so one thing that we got to do, um, how do we be, um, how do we persevere and be persistent is one, get rid of pride and that ego that, or that, 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 um, that ignorance that, well, God heard me. I'm not going to keep asking. Mm -hmm. God heard me. God knows my heart. Mm -hmm. um, and putting yourself in a position to say, and, and sometimes we're praying the same thing over and over and not knowing that what we got to do on our end. There's some things that I have done and I have made covenant and I believe in deliverance and all that stuff. So I, I believe that there's some things that I've done that I've came in and created covenants with the enemy. There's some things that I need to come out of the agreement with the enemy. There's some generational curses that I did in my teenage years that I need to break. So for me to say, God, do this, God, do this, and, and thinking that, okay, well, I've been, I prayed enough, God gonna do it and not realizing, okay, Tavini, you gotta go and break these generational curses. You gotta go and break your ancestors' generational curses. You gotta go and break bloodline curses and, you know, the sins of iniquity and transgression and stuff. So, to be persistent is to put your ego aside, you know, get that. Um, don't be ignorant to the fact that, okay, God, what do I need to do to manifest mm. the things of you, your destiny, your will for my life? Why am mm. I stagnant? Why is there lack in my life? Why am I not moving? Why am I not progressing? What do I need to do? Do I need to fast and pray? Do I need to fast a different way? There are several fasts in the Bible. Do I need to... Um, do I need to come out of, do I need to repent of something specifically? God just revealed to me yeah, Sunday that there was something I need to, I've repented for this thing and repented for this thing. But some reason it kept being like, and I'm like, why do I keep repenting? God done forgave me. And it was somebody came to me um, and, and spoke a word and said, you repented, but you wasn't specific. And I'm like, mm. what? God, are you serious? Like right now, are you kidding mm. me? that I need to, I, there was something that I did over and over and I needed to repent about it each time I did it. I repented the one time. Okay, God, wife. Mm -hmm. So my thing of being persistent and um, persevering is continue to go back to God, go back to the father, go back to the one who's knowing what's happening in that spiritual realm and say, what can I do? You know what, that scripture, what must I do to be saved? What mm -hmm. must I do to be free? What must I do that, that you're going to, um, that this thing will come to pass and this thing will now be lifted off my family, off bloodline generation. And just, that's the two things. Just be persistent. Don't have that what God heard me the first time. I ain't got to keep asking. And even Jesus went to pray again. And also um, Hezekiah, they said Hezekiah kept going to God asking mm -hmm. for life or healing or something. Mm -hmm. And he, and God really restored him 15 years because he was persistent and so that's what we need to do but not just be persistent praying the same thing over and over 15 years god what do i need to do now on my end too that's good that's really good it's almost like we got to reevaluate ourselves like evaluate ourselves when it comes to when we're persistent and the thing is not happening the way we want or how we want evaluate what how we play a part in it 
And pride is definitely one because I have heard that, that when you ask too many times, God don't need you to ask too many times. He heard you the first time. But uh, but it clearly says that many of the examples that I show, they, they ask multiple times and, and like the examples that you've shared too. So it's nothing wrong with asking more than once. Thank you, Tavina. Anybody else? How do what? we... Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. No, no. Go ahead. We'll finish your. No, I was just going to repeat the question. Go ahead. Okay. I mean, what what Sister Tavina did beautifully is is show why this series is called Words That Work because these words are working in tandem, you know. And what Hezekiah did in his is, is he was diligently persistent. If if you read that passage of scripture, it says that not only did he uh, persist in his prayer. He became so intentional to block out distractions that he actually turned his face to the wall mm -hmm. to make sure naturally it was a representation to God. I'm physically turning away from any and every distraction. I want to be diligent and so focused on this that nothing comes in mm -hmm. between me and you. And to your point, which is spot on, you know, this is where we have to be willing to interrelate all these things that we doing you know we got to be committed to being diligent at our persistence we got to be committed to doing these things for the long haul because whatever is valuable you got to fight for it. and the bigger the blessing is the more intense the battle you know for me to answer this question how do we persevere we persevere by just being consistent and by being insistent you know, being pers be, being consistent, meaning every day, I would even say every every moment that it comes up to repent, it comes up to ask, it comes up to praise, whatever it might be. We do it and it doesn't matter where we are. It doesn't matter who we're in the company of. And we are intentional. We make it a point to do it. We don't run away from the battle. We ask God to put us on the front line because in doing so, it forces us to put down the stuff that we've been carrying because we can't hold on to that stuff and hold on to the whole armor of God at the same time. Mm, that's good. That's good. I was going to, I'm going to just add something when you talked about um, distractions. One of the things that I had down as far as what I do, when I notice that I'm at a point I've asked God for something and I'm at a point of giving up is that, there's distractions and I have to make sure I keep my mind on Christ because it's so easily to be look at the situation or look at the thing that you've asked God for not that's not happening and get very discouraged and I think about you know it's like are you doing everything to keep your mind on Christ so I think about like a, a power like a shortage that's in a, in a, in a wire. So you could, you know, you connect, you plug that wire into the wall socket, but there is like a little shortage in the wire. Now the power that's coming from the wall is nothing is wrong with that. Then I, and that's kind of what represents God, right? Nothing is wrong with the power that's coming from it, but because somewhere down the line, I'm the lead, I'm the wire, I'm the cable. There's been a shortage. That means there's been a disconnect somewhere with the power, and that disconnect could be because I haven't been staying connected to God like I should. There's a shortage. There's a shortage where it may be in my prayer life. There's a shortage of prayer maybe in my um, word life. There's a shortage in being around, like in fellowshipping with God's people. There's some type of shortage. So for me, when I think about times where I feel like I don't want to do this no more, it's because I have some type of way disconnected or there's been less of a disconnect um, with Christ himself. That's one thing. The other thing that I, I thought about for me is that I noticed when I, when I want to persevere, I had to ask God my patience, ask God to give me patience because so easy to just start thinking like, it's not happening on my time. It ain't happening when I want it. It should be happening then. And then that's when we stop and we give up. And so to, to be persevering, you got to be persistent and to have perseverance, you have to have patience as well. 
got to have patience. So, okay. Was there anyone else that wanted to share? How do you persevere? What things that help you persevere? I was going to say along the lines of what you just said, um, I mean, it's in a similar vein of like, check my faith, check mm -hmm. my faith. Do I remember how big God is? Do I remember um, all the things that God can do? Do I remember how much he loves me, how much he cares for me and that he cares about the little things and, and just like checking my faith and, and remembering who it is that everything comes from. Like you said, that, that power supply and, and checking that connection of, of, have I have I lost some faith? Have I forgotten some things? Just going back and trying to remember, basically. Mm, that's good. Thank you. So I didn't write this question down, but I, I thought about this because I only have one more slide after that. And it's, it's very simple. But here's a question that I have, and you hear this a lot, and I don't 100% have the answer. So I'm asking anyone's input. What do you tell someone that says I was persistent, I believed, I did everything right, I prayed, I fast for that certain situation, and it still did not come to pass. So what do you tell someone that says I, per I would persevere to the end, but the end result was not in my favor? That's the would. I would um one I would minister to them about um the the Bible talks about you know the seeing visiting the thirty fourth generation the Bible talks about um that you know we can come into you know bringing in things in our life and so there's some people that's been praying for that I I I'll make it personal there's a friend I have been praying for um. You know, abundance wealth that God bless her business and and she was wealthy, right? And she lost mm -hmm. it all. And so mm -hmm. she's been praying, she's been sowing, she's been giving, she's been doing everything you can think of that, you know, what God, what we consider that God will require her to, you know, be good and to get back in that rightful place of her financial wealth. Um, but if we really look into this friend, this friend really walks in a lot of unforgiveness, a lot of <coughs> anger, bitterness, rage, right? And so this this friend deals with some things deep rooted that will hinder one, your prayer, hinder mm -hmm. two, your breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And th three, will give the enemy legal right to keep you bound, to keep you in bondage, to keep you stagnant, to keep you in lack. And so I would in a very, you know, nice mouth way, I'll have the Holy Spirit give me wisdom to talk to this person, which I have talked to this friend too, that let's reconsider some other things. Y yeah, you pray. Yeah, you fasted. But what else can we do that you can, you know, look inward and let's figure out some things that you can break of your bloodline, things that you can do differently in your life. Who do you need to forgive in your heart? You know, what's something that you need to let go? What is some, you know, maybe addictions you have? What are some things that you needed to renounce and come out of agreement with? What are some things that can be hindered in a spiritual realm that you don't really know and see? And then go before God. God, what is it? God is something. And, and I've experienced that myself. I, uh, lately, for the last couple of months, I've been like, God, I don't know what I'm feeling. But here you go. I don't really feel like being bothered. I don't really feel like I need you to reveal what's going on with me. And... Just, I just got the answer, partial of the answer from two different people at the same time. Not the same time, two different people on the same day. Different walks of life. One person in a whole nother state don't even know each other, but two people came and prophesied to me Sunday. Tavina, this is what you're dealing with. This is what you need to do. This is what, you know, for the next, just came to me and revealed some things that I've been just, God, what is it? What is it? Being persistent and asking, God, fix my heart. And God showed me and telling me, okay, this is what you need to do. And so they, those are the things that I will talk to and sit back with that person about. That's good. Thank you. That's another just kind of example of just let me see what I what I need. Did I go wrong? Let me re-examine myself when it comes to that. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, I was gonna say my I'm gonna be real personal here, but um my my encouragement to that person is um it's not over we're, we're still breathing 
you know, we're still here. Um, and it's his timing, not our timing. And then the other thing being like with my struggle with infertility and, you know, praying and fasting and praying and fasting. And I still have not had a child. I have never been pregnant. But then, like I told y'all in that testimony one time at church, um, God changed my perspective. It's not mm-hmm. that, I mean, I haven't given birth. I haven't been pregnant, but mm-hmm. I have children. Mm-hmm. He, he just gave them to me in a way that I wasn't expecting it. So sometimes I think we get too specific in what it is we're looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe he already has given us and we just need to broaden our vision a little bit, see what he sees. That's good. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. That God will change your perspective and let you be okay with the situation. And then he will, he will give you what you need, but it'll be in a different way. And then you don't even know that you needed that that way. You didn't even think of that way, but God gives you satisfaction in that. Anybody else? Both Sister Tavina and, and, and Sister Mel kind of said um, my approach. You know, my, my approach is really, you know, going back to what the word says, you know, keeping it in perspective, count it all joy. You know, whatever it is, good, bad, and different, count it all joy because remember you're in a relationship and God's intent and desire is always good and not evil towards you. Doesn't mean that challenging times won't come. But I go back to that scripture, you know, count it all joy when you fall in verse into diverse trials and temptations and understand that, that there's a process to it. You know, if you're walking by faith and not by sight, rebuilding, restarting, replanting, re whatever it is that you're doing, doing it a new way, not in your own way, but in God's way. The enemy's going to come. You want to come and check you and see if you really believe what you're standing on. You know, and as as your faith is tested, it works patience and we, we know how the scripture goes. And I bring them to that. So to help them see the end that you might be mature and complete, lack of nothing, because when God does it, he does it right and he does it completely. And I'm just thinking about the example, Sister Davina, that you gave gave, as your friend comes out of this, because she's going to come out of it. She's not only going to come out of it restored from with what she had, but she's going to come out of it with a whole new perspective and a whole new mindset to tell people not only how to come out of it, but how to avoid getting into it in the first place. Because when God does something, he does something completely. So I would just encourage the individual to, even in the midst of your disappointment, it's okay to be disappointed, but still give God praise. Because even in the midst of your disappointment, God is still good because he hasn't forgotten about you. Thank you. I was trying to look up that scripture that talks when they were talking about being content. And I think that's one of the things that we have to, we have to um, have to be sometimes when things don't go our way, just to be content with whatever the will of God is that, that, but that shows maturity and growth in Christ, because let's just be very honest. We are not going to get everything all the time. There is going to be some no's. It's going to be some no's. No matter how much we pray, there's going to be some no's. And, and it could be, and some things is because um, the, there are intentions or some things just because God just doesn't always give us the answer. Why? Why, we, why it doesn't work out or why we can't get what we want. But in a bigger picture, it would be that whatever, what, whatever, the end result is we're consistent and we are content. And then, like you said, pastor, we still praise God and give God thanks either way, because this life down here is only temporary anyway. Yeah. It, it's only temporary. Our reward really is in heaven. Yeah. So the, thank you for that. Oh, any. The, the passage of scripture, I believe you're looking for first lady is Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Mm hmm. Um, it, if, if, if I if I may, I, I can yeah. read it if you like. Go ahead. Uh, it says, um, begin with verse 11. Um, I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. And verse 13 says, 
I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Thank you. So we can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. That's even if we dealing with stuff that we don't like, we still can do it and be okay with it, be content with it because we have Christ. Thank you. Thank you. So this last, let's see, I'm trying to, okay. So this last one is, is quite a lot and it's actually a declaration and a decree for God's people um, to be persevered, to persevere and refuse to quit. And I'm going to read it. It's very powerful. Um, I said I was going to actually hang this up because we just need to hear. And I'll read it really quick and then that's the end of my study, but I'm going to read it. We decree God's people will stand firm in faith and grow strong in their love of the Lord. Their desire to soak in his presence is increasing. We decree and declare God is filling you with the knowledge of his will and all the wisdom and understanding which the Holy Spirit gives so that you will be able to live lives worthy of the Lord and entirely pleasing to him, being fruitful in every good work and multiplying in the full knowledge of God. We decree you will be continually strengthened with all the power that comes from God's glory might so that you will be able to persevere and be patient in any situation. Joyfully thanks to the Father for having made you fit to share an inheritance of his people in the light. We declare God, our Father, has already rescued us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus, Joshua. Through God's son, we, are re we have redemption. Our sins have been forgiven. We declare God has reconciled to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace to him through having his son shed his blood by being executed on the cross. We decree and declare that those who were at one time separated from God and has had had a hostile attitude towards him because of their wicked deeds are now reconciled through his death in order to present them holy and without defect or reproach before himself, providing that they continue trusting, grounded and steady in the hope offered in the good news. We decree hearts and minds are open to the voice of the Holy Spirit, drawing them to salvation. We bind the deception of the enemy. We speak strength, clarity, and truth to the lost. We declare, we decree encouragement and confirmations into your life that you may be certain of that to which you have been called. You have all the riches derived from being assured to the understanding and fully knowing God's truth, secret truth, which is Christ Jesus, Messiah, Joshua. You, we decree you are increasing in joy and the ease you move, for war, move forward in his trust truth and will for your life. We declare a cleansing and unifying of the people of this land as these decrees go forth. In the name of King Christ Jesus, empowered and led of the Holy Spirit of God, we dispatch angels, troops throughout this land and in the spirit realm to deliver these decrees to all both flesh and spirit. The enemy, the principalities and powers have no authority to act against these decrees in our King, the Lord God Almighty. Their actions will be of no effect of God's chosen ones, but will be turned back on themselves for destruction. The Lord God Almighty, maker of the heaven and earth, we praise your name and you are true and faithful and just to perform it. Amen. I thought this was so powerful. It kind of touched on many of the things that we talked about in the Bible study, but this is definitely something that we can speak over our lives when it comes to times when we want to give up and want, and we need to persevere. So if there's not any more questions, I'm going to turn it back into the hands of Pastor.
Jesus Ministries is a church on the move dedicated to sharing the good news of Jesus Christ through the preached and taught word, community activism and outreach, and practical ministry designed to meet needs, bless hearts, save souls, and change lives. You can sow into the ministry via our cash app at dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. That's dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. Sow your seed into the good works and good ground of Living Witness Ministries today. And thank you for helping us reach the world with the life giving way. We pray that you were blessed by today's broadcast and would love to hear from you. If you have any prayer requests, praise reports, or would like to learn more about Living Witness Ministries, you can contact us by email at livingtowitness at gmail.com. That's the word living, the number two, witness at gmail.com, or by phone at area code 404-955-8846. Again, that's area code 404-955. 8846. Until next time, we encourage you to continue to live your life as a living witness.